American Horror Story is headed back to its roots. The murder house. I have to tell this house. Get out of here! In order to stop the apocalypse, the coven witches need to swing by the murder house. You know what that means. Now, who do you think you are? We're the new owners. Who are you? Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our American Horror Story coverage, including our weekly breakdowns on Apocalypse. Hi. Hi. I'm Constance, your neighbor from next door, and this is my girl, Adelaide. <laughs> Hello. Go home, Addie. Now, that girl is a monster. I love her, and uh, I'm a good Christian, but Jesus H. Christ. You know, if they'd invented some of those tests a few years ago, I would have. How'd you get into my house? You left your back door open. Now, Constance Langdon, played by the incredible Jessica Lange, is the Harmon's creepy next-door neighbor that we met back in season one. From the outside, she seems like a kind and gentle Southern belle. But as we come to find out, she's quite mischievous and even downright evil. I would rather rot in hell than bury you in the same grave as your lover. A little background on Constance. She was born and raised in Virginia, but had dreams of becoming an actress. So she packed her bags and moved out west to Los Angeles. Her Hollywood dreams are cut short when she objected to the emphasis on nudity in the film industry. Constance eventually married Hugo Langdon, and they raised a family together in the infamous murder house. We met their three children throughout season one, Kate, Beauregard, and Adelaide. Now, supposedly there's a fourth child, but we'll get to that later. Hugo made a living as a car salesman, but was one horrible human being. He had an affair with their maid, Moira O'Hara, but Moira quickly realized it was a mistake and promised that it would never happen again. Now this didn't stop Hugo as he continued to make advances and, in one instance, forced himself on Moira against her own will. That's when Constance walked in on them, gun in hand, and mistook the encounter as consensual. First, she shot Moira point blank in the face and followed that up with three shots in Hugo's chest. Once I discovered that he had cheated, Hugo meant no more to me than dog shit. Oh! Moira's body was buried in the backyard, while Hugo was chopped up into tiny pieces and fed to the dogs. As for the children, they were told that their father had run away and abandoned the family. Without Hugo's salary, they no longer had the means to live in the murder house. But she didn't stay away for long. Constance soon seduced Larry Harvey, a banker who had moved into the murder house with his family after she was kicked out. Larry quickly fell in love with Constance and told his wife Lorraine that he had planned to leave her. Lorraine locked herself in their daughter's room and set all three of them on fire. Following the deaths of Harvey's wife and children, Constance and her three kids moved back into the murder house once again. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, Constance probably isn't winning any Mom of the Year awards. In fact, she had some pretty damn terrifying means of punishing her kids, like locking Addie in the closet filled with mirrors and keeping Bo chained up in the attic. This all came to a head in 1994 when Constance was going to be charged with child neglect for her treatment of Bo. She refused to let Child Protective Services take Bo away, so instead she thought it would be a better idea to kill him. Oh, what a great mom. She convinced Larry to smother Bo with a pillow, but claimed that her son had died of natural causes. The poor kid's spirit was thus trapped in the attic. More family tragedy struck that year as Tate hit his breaking point. He lit Larry on fire, and then he committed a mass shooting at Westfield High, which took the lives of 15 innocent students. Following the murders, he returned home and he was shot dead by the SWAT team. <sighs> Tate would continue to torment murder house inhabitants for years to come. Fast forward to 2011, where the Harmons are the next family eager to move into the murder house. If only they knew. Constance welcomes them with open arms. Well, actually, she steals some of Vivian's jewelry and silverware and bakes the Harmons cupcakes with one part Ipecac and one part spit. So she's actually a horrible neighbor. In the romance department, Constance is in a relationship with Travis, a young wannabe actor. Like Constance, he dreams of being a Hollywood star. She's attracted to his youth and beauty, and he's happy that he's found someone to take care of him. Now more tragedy hits home for Constance, this time on Halloween night as Addie is hit by a car and killed while trick-or-treating. In one of the season's most horrifying moments, Constance stops paramedics from trying to save Addie's life, and instead she tries dragging her lifeless body onto the murder house property. She hoped to have her daughter's soul attached to the house rather than never seeing her again. In a heartbreaking scene, she fails. You feel mercy! Oh, oh my God, Addie! Oh no! No. <laughs> no matter how tough Constance was on Addie, she's clearly crushed by this loss. So she elicits the help of medium Billy Dean Howard to speak to her once again. 
Addie explains that she's glad her mother didn't succeed in attaching her soul to the murder house. She'd be trapped there for eternity with all the other spirits, including her brother Tate, whom she despises after learning what he's done. Constance learned quite a bit more from Billy Dean Howard, specifically what would be the result of a human and spirit conception. A child born of human and spirit will usher in the end of times. It is the essence of evil. A perversion of the Immaculate Conception. Yep, she was talking about the Antichrist Michael Langdon who would bring about the end of times. Constance is particularly interested in this because Vivian is pregnant with her son Tate's child. Actually twins, but the alpha being Michael. Her plan is to take the child as her own and raise it, no matter how much of an antichrist it might be. She'd ask Travis if he would join her and help raise her grandchild together, but he wants no part of it. And he's subsequently murdered by Hayden, Ben Harmon's mistress. Trust me, it's a long story. Proving that there is some sort of law enforcement in American Horror Story, Constance is questioned about Travis's murder, as well as Hugo, Mora, and Bo. It's not clear how convincing she is to the police, but they have no evidence to take her in. Ultimately, good old Larry takes the fall for her. I know you loved me once, Constance. Just say it, and I can face whatever may come. It's not long until Vivian goes into labor. Instead of rushing to the hospital, she opts for a home birth. Excuse me, murder house birth. Yes, she entrusts the delivery efforts to the ghost of the house. One Charles Montgomery and two murdered nurses. Ben! Wake up. This house is trying to help, and right now you are in no position to refuse. Your wife needs you, so you better pull yourself together and get in there. For her. The first child, appearing to be stillborn, takes one breath before passing away, thus trapping yet another soul in the house. The second child, Michael, is a fittingly violent delivery. Vivian loses way too much blood and passes over during childbirth, joining her daughter Violet. The young boy is whisked away and cleaned up by Constance. She takes a pretty aggressive approach to babysitting her grandson, putting up a bit of resistance when Ben comes over to take him and then cautions Ben against taking Michael back into the murder house. What's gonna happen to this sweet little baby? The baby's gonna be fine. Oh, you are a fool! After everything that you've seen, after everything that has happened, how can you still be so blind? Alone with only his young toddler, Ben attempts to commit suicide until he's talked out of it by Vivian and Violet. But just as he's about to leave, stage five spiritual clinger Hayden and two other ghosts hang him from the chandelier. Ben's spirit joins the rest of his family for their eternal stay at the murder house. Constance finally gets her hands on the child after the ghost of Travis helps her take him from Hayden. Again, the cops come around, ask some more questions of Constance, but it doesn't amount to much. She pleads that Violet must have taken the baby and ran away for good. Again, some real detective work here. No surprise here as we find out Constance has been hiding Michael and plans to raise him as her own. Aren't you my good little angel? Ooh. Season one wraps up with a three-year time jump and Constance at a beauty salon. It seems the cops have cooled off her tail and she's been raising Michael on her own. Well, actually with the help of babysitter Flora. That is, until Constance returns home to find her cute grandson has murdered the nanny. Now what am I gonna do with you? Constance Langdon makes a return to American Horror Story in the sixth episode of Apocalypse, which also marks the directorial debut of Sarah Paulson. Now, Constance might have more of a connection to the Coven Witches than we ever imagined. In the season finale of Murder House, she tells her hairstylist at the beauty salon that Michael was the son of her distant cousins who passed away. No, he was the um, child of distant cousins on my mother's side. The DeLong Braves of Virginia, Eveline and Steve, they died tragically in a highway accident outside Richmond, leaving that poor little angel an orphan. Terrible. Now that name should be extremely familiar to you. Mimi DeLong Prey was one of Fiona Good's predecessors as Supreme during the 18th and 19th centuries. Now, all of this said, does Constance have some kind of witch genes or something going on? Does she possess the power of the sight? What else could explain how she knew to save Ben from burning himself on the stove in the middle of the night? Now is not your time. Enjoy the house. Or when she baked those tasty cupcakes that she said were for Violet only to actually save Violet from the home intruders. It sure seemed like she had some type of sixth sense. I see that. No, don't play that. Okay, and finally, let's talk about some random fun facts about Constance Langdon. 
Off the top, Constance should remind you of another infamous neighbor named Minnie from Rosemary's Baby, a role that would win Ruth Gordon an Academy Award in 1969. Now, Constance stated that she had four children, but we never found out his or her name. According to producer Tim Minear, Constance revealed this little detail during her final monologue in the beauty salon, but the lines ended up being cut. Now, Constance's kitchen might look familiar to you, especially if you watch Ryan Murphy's other shows. The same location was used for the kitchen of Santana's grandmother in Glee. And finally, Jessica Lange has played four characters during her time on American Horror Story, but Constance Langdon is the only character she's portrayed that did not die by the end of the season. Fingers crossed that she makes it out of the apocalypse alive. Thanks for watching everyone. Let us know your favorite Murder House moments in the comment section down below. And make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of our AHS coverage. And until next time, keep it tuned to GameSpot Universe. Bye bye. A remarkable boy. Destined for greatness. <laughs>